Um, Mike, uh, thanks for agreeing to do this. How are you? Yeah, not so bad under the circumstances. And yourself? Yeah, very good, thanks. Very good. How are the kids? They're fine. They uh, Homeschooling is a challenge. Um, I, <laughs> I, I so you were the right. No, definitely is doing the heavy lifting. Definitely. I, I didn't miss my calling not being a teacher, for sure. Uh, it's uh, a tricky, tricky task. It certainly is. Yeah. So whereabouts are you now? I'm in Somerset. Um, thankfully, I'm one of those people who've got a second house. That, uh, although I think it's my primary residence. So, um, uh, but no, I'm in Somerset and, uh, and working uh, like everyone else. Remotely, we don't like to say working from home. We're working remotely. <laughs> I tell everyone the office has set up, you know, 40, 45 satellite offices yeah. across London and uh, Essex and Surrey and Somerset and Gloucestershire. So uh, we're all functioning fine. And uh, you get decent internet speeds down there in Somerset? Yeah, no, surprisingly we do. Crap mobile reception, but the, the internet is, is pretty good. And we have our IT guys looking at everyone's internet speed all, all the time. And I think out of all of us, only uh, only one girl in, in Battersea's got crap, you know, internet speed. So um, we're going to try and fix that if we can. So how are you kind of maintaining the office? Obviously, you're doing lots of video meetings, but, you know, the day-to-day -day of an office, how are you managing it? It's well, surprisingly, it's, it's working. Uh, it's working well. We try to keep everyone in the office for as long as we could, uh, but one team ended up working with an interior designer who was diagnosed with corona uh, virus, and that was the, the beginning of it all. And then we all slowly ended up having to, uh, as I say, work remotely. And I think in the beginning it was a bit of a novelty, um, although I think that novelty has quickly uh, worn off, and we're all complaining that. Zooming and Skyping and Microsoft Teaming is completely exhausting, and we all want to get back to the office. So, yeah. But thankfully, we're incredibly busy, and uh, so for us, this time is 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 actually really good time uh, to get ahead of uh, uh, with most projects. Thankfully, most of our clients have kind of taken it as a positive, and uh, we're sort of knuckling down. Only for the design side of things, it's particularly uh, useful because. It's quality time that you can sit down and you can really think about what you're what you're designing. So it's it's a positive. I know it's not like that for everyone. A lot of uh, projects are being cancelled, and certainly on our land based projects, there uh, they've come. To, some of them have come to a halt. Um, boat projects not yet, and uh, and so we're carrying on as normal. And uh, let's hope we can continue. So yeah, you sound a bit croaky. Are you, are you okay? Oh, I've been in and out of uh, hospital for, um, uh, this year with a frozen shoulder, so I'm trying to get it uh, unfrozen, as they say. But uh, uh, hopefully, ready for the summer. But uh, yeah. I'm not sure that the summer's going to happen happen for any of us at the moment. I'm trying to ignore all the people who are telling me that uh, we're going to be like this till September. I can't even think about that um, because it's just too awful a thought. Well, we're still uh, hopeful that at the beginning of August we can set sail. But uh, I don't know. We're being positive, so let's not be negative and and uh, uh, and, and aim for at least for the beginning of August. Because I think I'm like you. The idea of going till September <laughs> will be a killer. I should think we'll all be hating one another. Yeah, exactly. Well, what I've been finding is that the um, when you're in the office, obviously you, you're you're talking to people you're looking people in the eye but now there's there's that and there's email but now there's teams there's slack there's uh email there's uh phone text Lutings. whatsapp yeah so now there's you know six or seven ways it seems that people can get to you um the you know whereas in the office there was only a couple so I, somehow i'm busier at home than I ever was in the office it's i think strange. we're all feeling exactly the same thing yeah. but it's you know, people tell you that it's working from home is good. Working from home is more uh, uh, productive. I just don't buy it. You know, I think when we're in the office, we just get a lot of a lot more buzz and a lot more uh, energy uh, bouncing off one another. 
I mean, you, you, you know, I've, I've been doing various project uh, team meetings uh, uh, on Zoom, and and it does work, you know. But I don't know. There's something about smelling someone and and looking them in the eye that uh, that you know works better. But I guess it's a different way of working, and we're all going to get used to it. Yeah, but I think in the creative field, it's really important to be in a you know sit around a table with someone or sharing a coffee or just having that kind of back and forth, which you lose some of that dynamism, I think, when... You do, <coughs> although I often disappear off here down to, to Somerset and, and, and get my head down, and, uh, uh, and, you know, if I want to crack out of a, a design over a couple of days, it's good, I go into isolation, or if I'm writing a, uh, an article for something, it's actually quite good to get away, and then I can come back to the office and I can, you know, explain to people the ideas and, you know, what I'm trying to achieve. Um, and, and it's sort of happening now electronically, but you just, you don't get that immediacy, I yeah. don't think. You don't, you know, I've got to phone up someone and say, okay, let's get together and Zoom and, uh, uh, and, and, and let's see how it goes. But it's working. It is, you know, for any clients out there who are watching, it is actually working. And, and it's working with clients as well as within the office as well. So we're pretty happy. Well, let's talk about, you, can you talk about any of the boat projects you're working on at the moment? Um, I'm, I can talk to you about some of them. As everyone knows, we've been heavily involved with Moon and, and Amos. Um, and uh, Amos, as you know, uh, they're 60 metres. They've already sold two of them, so they're pretty uh, cock a hoot. We're very happy about that. Uh, the Moonen, we're working on uh, the second Mooney that's coming out, uh, which they hope to have ready for the Monaco Boat Show. Whether that happens or not, I don't know. It will be hugely disappointing for everyone, I think, if it doesn't, because mm. we put so much effort into that. But also, we're looking at uh, number three, 36 meter, and we're also uh, looking at the 42 meter. Um, and then we've got another 120 meter boat. So we're, it's good, it is good time for us because we can, um, Corona doesn't really matter. We can just get, get our heads down and, uh, and beaver away. So, um, you know, during the course of the day, I'm kind of, working across projects, uh, both land and, and, and sea, um, and I'm busying myself with lots of things going. I can hardly sleep. I mean, my head is exploding with ideas and solutions and problems uh, uh, on, on different projects. So, uh, so I'm making the most of, uh, of this isolation that we're in. Yeah. The, um, how's it going with the new owners of Moon? Have you had much to do with no. them so far? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, we're in communication with them quite a lot. They're very passionate, um, and uh, they're really determined to, uh, uh, you know, to do something really uh, fun and interesting. Uh, Thirty-six. We're trying to think. Okay, what, 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 what are we looking for in, in in a boat in two or three years' time? You know, we have refined and refined the plan, um, so it's actually quite difficult to think that we can improve on it. Um, uh, in terms of its function, but I think aesthetically we're kind of exploring what we can do differently, um, and then also looking at the 42 to see what we can do that is, um, you, you know, developing a language across the boat, but also giving that 42 its own sense of identity and, and giving reason as to why you should, you know, you go up from 36 to 42. What are the other extra things that we can put into a 42 other than just the bigger space? So. Uh, uh, so you're being a bit of a clairvoyant, you know, trying to look into the future, um, and who knows what the future will be at the moment. But as I said, we're positive. We are uh, very, very. Um, we're, 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 we think the future is very bright. You know, this time next year, we'll have forgotten about all this hassle we're going through. I hope so. I hope so. Um, you are in the unique position, of course, of owning a 36 meter moon. In. So you have an insight into how these boats are built, how they're used, um, and how does that kind of influence the design of other 36 metre moons you're working on, and even the 42? I think in, in kind of my experiences with boats, uh, obviously from a designer's point of view, they're aesthetic, and from a, an owner's point of view, they're functional. So um, for me, I think... Yeah, you know, of course, I've always got my designer hat on, but I'm always, uh, you know, I'm in discussion with the crew and the captain constantly what works, what doesn't work, what fails, what's a hassle um, from a technical point of view. So I can feed that back to Moonen. Um, 
just through my own experiences on the boat, I know, you know the kind of things that work and that don't work, uh, the things that I enjoy. Um, I think, you know, I think the practicality uh, is crucially important. It's something that I'm fighting with even my in-house designers all the time. You know, nice fabric, is it practical? A nice fabric, but, you know, can I relax into it and not feel, oh, I'm covered in, uh, you know, suntan oil, I, you know, I'm going to ruin everything if I sit on them. So it, it's, it's, it's that knowledge of, of, of boats and, um, and my own experiences of just using them all the time. So uh, it's incredibly invaluable. I think to be able to talk to uh, an, an owner um, and, and, and tell him of my own experiences uh, and my own knowledge, I think is reassuring. It gives confidence uh, because they know what I'm talking about. I've lived it. I've experienced it. Um, and I don't give bullshit, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Talking don't as... Cut that as well. No, no, that's good. That bit of nice, nice, candid Mike Fisher thoughts. The, for the... Because um, you have loved and used boats and owned boats for such a long time, it took the studio a while. <coughs> Your first big boat was Joy, which is a huge boat really to as your first stab at yacht design with a 70 meter fed ship why was that a deliberate choice to move the studio into yachts or was it just you got the right client at the right time or no i think i think it's it's a trend that happens that we've seen um that you know you do someone's you know house you get asked to do their country house their place in where they may come from their son their daughter's house their offices their boat, their plane, their ski chalet. I think it's, you know, you build up a relationship with a client. Um, and our studio in particular has, has increased, it's got an incredibly diverse look. Yeah. Um, it's also got a very diverse portfolio. You know, at the moment, we're working on boats and, and planes and houses and offices and hotels and showrooms. And for us, that, you know, that it's, it's just brilliant because... It keeps us energized and it keeps us challenged. I can't imagine anything worse than being a studio and you go, Mike Fisher, you come to us for our look and uh, you know the way that we do things. We don't want to work like that. We want to be challenged by a client. Um, we want to uh, you know to to to, uh, to go on a journey with the client and and learn something new and create something new at the end of the day that reflects the client. And hopefully a little bit of studio in the go, but takes the client on a journey and ourselves on a journey. That's yeah. really, really important. And uh, to, to talk about the boat for a sec, so where is Brigadoon at the moment? Uh, Brigadoon is uh, stuck in uh, Palma, Mallorca. Couldn't be worse. The Spanish have, 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 have been hit pretty hard. Um, so the crew are pretty much sort of in isolation and, uh, uh, as it were, locked down on the boat. I can't imagine a worse place to be to be honest but um, or a nicer place to be I should say you know although um, it, it, I'm, I'm sure it, it's going to get pretty uh, pretty awful for them but, have they been given uh, any said, indication about how long they're likely to be in that position no I think uh, it, you know I've spoken to our captain and it's pretty it's pretty tight over there so she's at Port Adriano yes okay yeah. okay yeah so it's a good base for us yeah but presumably all those shops there, the, that kind of nice line of eateries and shops, and that's all closed, I'm guessing. I imagine it's all completely yeah. dead, yeah. I think uh, it's, it's a food shop, and I, the Spanish have pretty much closed gyms and everything that's not food retail and medicine. So, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. what a waste of a summer. I mean, I know. at least in the house in the country, you know, we're all, you know, during the day we kind of beaver away. I'm in the study, my partner's in the, the library. Uh, my niece is in the billiard room. It's a bit like Cluedo down here, um, and then we meet up for, for for meal time. So it's 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 good. We have a bit more space down here. And so hopefully, fingers crossed, there is something of a summer season. So once the boats are released from Palma, what uh, what is, what in an ideal world do you get? Say a bit of July and some of August and September on board. What do you do? Well, we're, we're looking forward to going, heading to, to, to the Greek islands and, and on to Turkey. Let's, uh, fingers crossed, let's hope that's still going to happen. Um, it's something to, to look forward to in, in isolation, but uh, uh, we, we wait and see. We wait and see. Yeah. Any thoughts to a, another boat, or are you very satisfied with Brigadoon for the time being? You know, we're, we're really, we've thought about something 
figure, you know, for us going, you know, Matthew who uh, owns Moon and says, oh, come on, go for a 42, go for a 42. And, uh, you know, I suppose it's something that we're considering, uh, but with uh, coronavirus, shit, you know, no, I don't think any, we can't see beyond, uh, let's try and get on the boat for, for the summer uh, and then we'll take it from there, see what happens. I think everyone's living, and everyone, everyone is living kind of month to, or even day to day, a day at a time at the moment. So we, yeah. Exactly. I hope um, the autumn run of boat shows is unaffected and kind of we can get into the Q3 of this year in some kind of normal I guess we'll see. You know. Exactly. And we, in our office, we've got a load of Italians, you know, who work for us. And, you know, you follow, you know, they follow what's happening back home and you do feel for them. Uh, but I hopefully see what ha is going to happen in the UK, but uh, also hopefully learn some lessons from what's been happening in Italy as well, so you never know. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. In Italy, um, given its boating industry, it's, such a, it's a massive industry over there, it employs tens of thousands or hundreds, even hundreds of thousands, I'm not quite sure. Shipyards all over the place, I hope they bounce back strongly because they're going to be hurting at the moment. I'm sure, absolutely. But I think that from some of the designers I've been speaking to, they're doing exactly what I'm doing, taking advantage and uh, and knuckling down and uh, and hopefully being creative as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, I hope everyone's using this time wisely and not just watching a lot of Netflix. Well, the temptation is strong. <laughs> well, th th there's Netflix in the evening, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I hope you've been watching Tiger King, by the way. Tiger King, no, miss that one. You no, must. I've, I've been doing movies, you know, everything that I've missed out on for like, the best part of six months. So um, uh, last night was Spike, it was crap, but, uh, you know, it whiles away the time, that's for sure. Trust me on Tiger King. Have, have a look at it. Okay. It, we'll go for it. It is interesting. Um, Mike, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Pleasure. Nice talking to you, and uh, looking forward to the magazine when it comes out at least electronically, if not uh, physically anyway. Yeah, we'll make sure we'll get a copy to you, and uh, fingers crossed uh, you get to spend some good time on Brigadoon this year. Take care. Thanks, buddy.